Alright guys, here's a little pull. I do, I have done a lot of things to this car, and I do have a, a decent amount of information about a couple little items that I'll uh, speak of in the later video. I'm just gonna go over some of the uh, mods and things that I've gotten for the car. First of all, it had uh, clear bumper lights. I went to the junkyard, and I just put the red ones up here because the clear ones were, um, like eBay ones and that's about it for the exterior I found out this hood brawl is not an OEM hood brawl this hood brawl is from eBay for $80 I just drove through some mud the little tab on my corner light broke there so I just unplugged it because it kept on falling out the side skirt fell off the other day on the highway so I have it a little bit held on better I gotta work that out Speaking of side skirts, I found out these side skirts are actually a Civic Type R. If they were a HFP, this little piece right here would go up to about here. But these are Civic Type R side skirts, so that's why there's a Type R sticker on it, because it's from actual Civic Type R. I haven't had time to take the stickers off because I need a heat gun. Rear bumper light tab broke and kept on falling out, so I took it off too. Um, I took the uh, red H off here. I found out the H logos on the car, the Honda logos, the red ones are not real. So I went to the junkyard, got that one. I still got to clean up some of the double side tape that's on it. I took the uh, SI logo off. Excuse the uh, cop or whatever is going on. I took the SI logo off. I'm trying, uh, I'm trying to get rid of all the red on the car. I'm trying to debadge it from uh, being an SI, as weird as that sounds. I got a couple of fender washers. That's a fire truck. That's about it for the exterior. What I have mostly been working on is the interior. Um, as you can see in a second. First of all, when I got the car, these were plastic dip black. I took the plastic dip off and I can see why they plastic dipped them because it was really, it was, it was worse than this. It was really like nasty and color peeling and stuff. So I went to the junkyard. I got silver little door handle insert. I also, I got the silver 0405 uh, door switches. They're not perfect condition, but I got those for cheap. LKQ, shout out. I got... The uh, chrome little um, piece of there on the vents. Let me go ahead and hop in here real quick. I found out that my airbag wasn't a JDM Type R. It was actually a the, the stock one with a sticker over it, and it looked real to me. I cleaned uh, the red stitching on the steering wheel. I took off the uh, cruise control module here. I need to get the Type R uh, surround piece, but my plans for the steering wheel is I plan on getting a 05 to 09 Honda S2000 wheel itself. Then I'm going to run the 2000 to 2004 airbag because it has a silver uh, logo, the silver Honda logo. I uh, The cruise control button used to be here. I went to the junkyard and got a little block off plate. 
because obviously I'm deleting the cruise control because in the future when I upgrade to the K-tuned uh, cast aluminum uh, throttle body, they don't have cruise uh, control on it. I went to the junkyard and got this, the windshield stock. Mine worked fine, but since this being a hatchback, it had the rear um, wiper on it. So I used to have a little like switch thing here. So I got this off of just like a uh, an EM2. As you guys seen in the last video, this bezel piece was all black. We'll come to find out it wasn't wrinkle blacked; it was plasti dipped. So I went to the junk and I took the plasti dip off, and I can again see why they plasti dipped it because it was rough. It was super nasty. I went to the junkyard, got this whole bezel piece here for seven dollars. Got the 0405 vents. Then I took the gauge pillars off. I was trying to find the stock gauge pillars, but I cannot find them. I'm gonna have to order them. But I took those off for now. I made this gauge bezel out of cardboard. Um, I'm, the main reason why I made it is to have as a template because I was gonna make it out of ABS plastic. So I went ahead and put that in here to test fit it. And as you can see, obviously it being cardboard is junk. So I was gonna make one out of ABS plastic but I went ahead and just ordered a, um, I believe it's called Cubby Pods uh, from eBay. It's $25. It's an aluminum premium triple gauge pod holder that bolts to uh, the factory like stereo points. So just don't mind the cardboard right now. Like I said, I originally made it to, as a template. Um, this little bezel piece was plastic dipped also. I could not find that at the junkyard. So I unplastic dipped it and it's pretty good condition. As you can see, I got a RSX hazard button because the factory EP3 one's all red with the white logo. I got rid of that Ricer uh, Neochrome shift knob. I got this. This is a RSX uh, A-Spec 5-speed uh, shift knob. So much better. Also, I had a Buddy Club short shifter in it, which it still does, but it squeaked and it was really hard to get into gears. So I uh, lubed that up. I took it out, lubed it up, put it back in. <laughs> then um, this is a uh, obviously the cup holder lid. Uh, this little tab right here had broken off. So I went ahead and um, I went ahead and got a new lid for right here. So that's not broken off no more. I still need to get a new e-brake handle. Um. It had the original floor mat over there. Then the one over here was actually in the back. So I got the uh, original floor mat in. I went to the junkyard and I got these little floor mat tab holder things. This car never came with them factory. I guess it was like maybe an 04, 05 thing. I don't know. I got those little uh, things in there. My car was missing this little pocket here. This like little tray pocket. I don't know why it was missing. But I got that on there. This little uh, fuse uh, block or fuse um, box cover was taken off. I got to put that back on. This other little box here or this little cover here was taken off. Don't mind that green wire. That's for data logging for the Honda. But got that c cover on. There used to be a uh, wideband wires and all that wires hanging down here. I got a new pedal cover there. Um, I'm trying to think what else. Obviously, I took the radio out, um, completely out, sold the radio, took the tweeters out of here, took the door speakers out. So this car has no radio, no speakers in the whole car now. Obviously, I got the other vent over there. The other um, little insert on the door there. The door switch there. So the, this interior is mostly absolutely complete. Um... It's just missing uh, four items. The pillar there, the pillar over here, and I'll show you in the back in a second. Um, for the back, I took the rear uh, headrest off. I think those are absolutely stupid. Why would you want rear headrest and a hatchback when the rear window is pretty small? Um, I took the uh, buckles out for the rear seat belts. I uh, took the seat belt out there that goes into the seat. I just pulled it all the way out and cut it. Same with the one over there. I took that out because no one's going to be riding in the back of this car. I may eventually just take the rear seats out. I don't know yet. 
Uh, I'm trying to think what else real quick. I'll show you the other two items that I'm missing. These are the other two items that I'm missing, the little strut covers. Then obviously I'm missing the uh, cargo cover. Then, oh yeah, I forgot, I'm missing the little board thing that goes along here. When I got the car, I had cardboard, or not cardboard, but uh, plywood. So I took that out. I took the rear strut bar off. And I uh, took the carpet piece off of there. Like I said, I took the headrest off. The seat belts, I cut those, because like I said, I don't need them. Don't have no use for them. And I sure in the heck do not want to take the whole panels off to take them out properly. Even though that's where my weight savings would be coming from, the four pounds or whatever they are each. I was missing these little caps here. Got those from the junkyard. I'm trying to think what else. So I don't, I don't believe this is an original HFP car. But whoever installed the spoiler, they did a proper. This is for the HFP spoiler, this little black insert thing. So I don't know what's up with this car, why it has HFP badges on it. Maybe you guys can correct me in the comments. From what I understand, HFP only comes on the 0405 and not the 0203. Maybe the original owner had this car then took it back into the dealer and had the items installed. Because like I was saying in the last video, it's missing the rear lip. Well, come to find out, this is a factory rear bumper and there's no holes in it for the rear lip. So that means this car never was the original HFP car, which is kind of unfortunate, but I believe they only come in the 0405 anyway. And the side skirts are type R and not HFP. The front lip is HFP, so what I'm guessing is uh, the original owner or one of the owners either bought the uh, front lip in the spoiler or had it taken in there. I plan on getting the stock front badge, but so that's, um, that's it for the interior. Like I said, I'm going to get the S2000 steering wheel. Oh, for the gauge cluster, since I'm deleting the SI logos, I'm going to get a uh, Mark 7 uh, five-door Civic cluster, so stay tuned for that. I'm going to get the uh, EP2 floor mats and get rid of the SI logo. Like I said, I'm trying to do a, a red uh, color delete. Then for the seats, like I already mentioned, I'm going to get the 04 or 0506 cloth RSX seats. But as you can see, there's the interior. It is so much cleaner now. I'm actually pretty happy with it right now. For the pedals, I'm gonna get the RSX Type R pedals because they're silver. Then eventually I gotta get new uh, side markers. Let me go ahead and pop this hood real quick. It's hard to remember what I did to the car, but it had the factory like fire shield thing under the bottom of the hood. I took that off. Here's the engine bay. As you can see, the valve cover is gone. I went to uh, LKQ and bought just a stock valve cover off that. They had an EP3 there that was black. And I took the uh, stock valve cover off. It's not perfect, but I got that for $17. I, um, I bought it so I can get my uh, Type R1 uh, sandblasted and powder coated. As you can see, I took the uh, DC Sport strut bar off. There's so much more room in there now. But I'll show you back here, I guess. I do have a leak. I'll, uh, I do have a leak right here. I think the, either the turbo manifold's cracked or it's a header gasket that's blown out. You can see right there the, he the heater core spots. There's supposed to be a line coming off of right there. And right there so that's what I need to do to run the heater I found out so I have a lot of information on this car I'll tell you all that in a second I found out it's a, a PLM turbo manifold has a rev 9 44 millimeter wastegate it's a turbonetics uh, 6048 ball bearing turbo um, and I found out I'll post some photos up in a second 
I found out this car was uh, supercharged before it was turboed. It was turboed about three, two to three years ago, and it was supercharged uh, before then. So I'm gonna go ahead and post the photos up of when it back when it was supercharged and when the previous owners had the car. But anyway, that's what it looked like back then. So it's not a lot has changed, but anyway, it used to be Jackson Racing Supercharged. But anyway, so the things that I found out, which I did not know this, the block is a K20, uh, K20A2 block, which I knew that, from a 2004 RSX Type S. Oh, 122,000 miles on the block. The head, I don't know if you're gonna be able to see, Probably not. I don't know if you can see the RR or RBB2. The head is actually a K24A2 head. And this is what really I was kind of happy about, obviously. It has Brian Crower Stage 2 Boost Cams. It has uh, Supertech Dual Valve Springs. Supertech Titanium Retainers. Um, ARP Head Studs. So, and port and polish. So the head's like fully built, which I didn't know that when I got the car. So it's like some surprises that I didn't know, which are good surprises. Another little thing I got is I got fender washers on the car. You know, you can see those. Just a couple little fender washers here and there. The car is very dirty. And also, the boost controller, I thought it was like a uh, an air compressor valve or something, but I come to find out that's a Turbonetics boost controller. That's a hundred and twenty-five dollar boost controller. I'm trying to think what else is done to the car that I uh, found out or. Oh, right here. This is for the heater. They cut the pipe, put a hose on, it, and stuck a bolt through it. So that's obviously for the heater. So I'll be getting rid of that ghetto stuff. But a couple of the items that I ordered for the car, as you can see, this right here is where the map sensor would go on the stock uh, throttle body. They stuck, I don't know what they stuck in there to block that off. So I bought the uh, K-Tuned map sensor delete plug. I got the K-Tuned, because this is an open, uh, open right here and it just blows the hot air. I got the K-Tuned breather filter. Let's see if I can show you back here. Right here, they have another bolt stuck into something. Well, come to find out, that's for the factory oil cooler. So I can show you back here. That's for the factory oil cooler. So I bought the K-Tuned um, Delete for that. Also, this car has a dash uh, six AN lines all the way back from the tank. I don't know if you can see, if I can find it, right there. And they have the uh, fuel pressure regulator set up backwards. They're pressurizing the fuel before it goes into the rail when you're supposed to pressurize the fuel after the rail. So that's another thing I need to fix. I'm trying to think what else I got. I got. Um, it has a major exhaust leak, so either the turbo manifold's cracked or the exhaust gasket is blown out. So I got an OEM Honda exhaust gasket on the way. I got a new gasket for the turbo to turbo manifold that train's coming I guess I should have got a new gasket for there too this train so I need to order a new gasket for that too the oil feed I got a new gasket for the downpipe so all the gaskets are all gonna be brand new I'll show you the uh, one gasket right here I got the other gaskets at home this is the manifold to turbo gasket. Then I also got a K-Tune plate frame from a pit crew online. Shout out to them. There's the uh, Instagram. I'm trying to think what else I got. Um, I got the little cubby pocket thing. I got a, a turbo blanket, a titanium turbo blanket. More fender washers. Um, a couple of other little things that I'll uh, show you when I get them all in and installed. But that's all I can think of for right now. 
Oh, another little thing. This caliper, when I got the car, the reason why my wheel was so dirty in the last video is because the caliper was leaking brake fluid. I didn't know it was a brake fluid, and I left it on there. Oh, you're not about, you're not gonna be able to see, I guess, but it ate the clear coat on the front of the wheel a little bit. So I got the new caliper, brand new caliper on there. Also, I forgot, I took the spacer off. It still pokes a little bit, because it did have a uh, spacer in here. I took that off, got some blocks opened into lug nuts. As you can see, the ARP wheel studs. So it has ARP studs in the front, like I mentioned in the last video. The new lug nuts. Um, give me one sec, I'm gonna end the video, then I'm gonna go and find out what else I ordered. All right, I'm back. So I forgot I uh, got all new clips on here. Nothing major. I got a new serpentine belt. As you can see, one of the like ribs is like torn off. You can see it right here. It's anyway. I got a new serpentine belt on the way. And yes, I will be fixing this. How this nut only has like two threads on it. This car does has has sport motor mounts, but I believe they're just like the street mounts, so the motor does rock a little bit back and forth. So you're not gonna be able to see. Well, maybe right there. I ordered uh, energy suspension polyurethane inserts for that bushing there. I ordered those. Um, the car is a three inch uh, straight piped all the way back. And when it gets to the axle back, it goes back to down to two and a half, I believe. The down pipes two and a half and they have no flex pipes on none of this exhaust. So it's all hard mounted. That's why the turbo manifold cracked. If it did crack is because of that. I plan on putting a flex pipe in there. Um, I ordered more fender washers like I mentioned, and I ordered a new rear wiper delete. It already has one, but I don't know what brand that is, so I went ahead and just ordered a new one. Anyway, that's all I can think of for right now. So, that's gonna be it for this video. I will post up at the end of the video um, a couple pulls, like I mentioned, that I would do. Those pulls were real quick, and I was filming with one hand and trying to shift and steer with the other hand, so it was pretty sketchy. I would not recommend doing that, especially in a high horsepower car. Um, you can hear in the video, I do have the exhaust leak, so please don't mind that. It still builds 15 PSI. I did turn it up to 15 PSI, like I mentioned. So it should be around 450 wheel horsepower. I was told that it was tuned on 12 PSI and it made a little over 400, so like the 410. So at the end of the video, I will throw the pull videos up. Um, a little treat for everyone that made it to the end. So in the next video, I'll have all the parts installed and a couple other little things will be done. I plan on doing like a little bit of weight reduction to the car. I did weigh the car last night with a half a tank of gas without me in it. It weighed 2,560 pounds. So this car weighs 2,500 pounds and makes 450 wheel horsepower, which that's a, that's a pretty good power to weight ratio. But all right guys, stay tuned for the next video, probably within um, a week or two.